Okay, this is demonstrating the overload chip protection in our 18 and 20 kW proof systems. The uh, system currently has a uh, dead short that I put into it. It's just this uh, two foot strip of wire here with the ends just tied together, twisted together here. Uh, it's going to uh, simulate a, uh, a, a short that you might have on an E-match or an igniter, maybe a homemade igniter or or some kind of bridgeless igniter that you're using to set off your fireworks. By far, um, problems with uh, circuits taking damage from overheat and overload is the biggest problem on all firing systems. Uh, there's a few out there with overload chips and this is uh, this is the one that we've come up with. Um, to show you exactly how we're going to do this, I've got it programmed for all fire, which means when I press all, all the cues will fire. The key is on, and Q1 is shorted. When the system detects the overload, you're, it's going to set an audible alarm. You'll hear the audible alarm kick on, and then the system will automatically drop its volts down and the amperage down to save the system from damage. You'll also see the warning indicator light start to flash. Testing the system in three, two, one, firing. So you see it detected the, the problem. Now, I'm going to shut it off and we'll, we'll do this a few times. The same thing, what we're going to do, so you actually see what the bolts do is uh, I'll go ahead and I'll hook a voltmeter in and you can actually see what ends up occurring as uh, as the system then detects the uh, the surge in, in uh, current. And we're going to just keep running this test over and over again. This is a 24 volt output. When it detects, as a matter of fact, to show you that, I'm going to go ahead and pull one of the streams out to uh, make it so it's no longer overloaded. And I'll fire and you'll see the 24 volts or 23.8 that I have not charged its battery in a while so let's just see what it is. 3, 2, 1. Uh, so 23.8. I'm going to go ahead and put back the uh, the wire here which will of course create the overload. Firing in 3, 2, 1, overload. Okay. You can see the volts drop way down when it detected the overload and of course it's an overload protection mode. Turning it off, we're going to overload it again. Firing in 3, 2, 1, firing. Went back down. Okay, it's now in safe mode, firing at overload again. 3, 2, 1, firing overload. I'm going to do it a few more times. Three, two, one, overloading. Okay, so we've overloaded the system. Now what we're going to do to test the system, this specific cue, we're going to go ahead and move these over. Okay, the blacks are common grounds so I can actually keep the black one on this and then the red one on Q1 and uh, it will work. Firing Q1 overloaded Q off overload in 3, 2, 1, firing. 23.9. So it's firing full volts, it detects no overload. Doing it again. 3, 2, 1, firing. 23.9, almost 24 volts. So basically you've uh, just seen how resilient the system is. Again, overload damage on firing systems is probably the number one problem with these kinds of uh, devices because basically what you're doing is you have a controlled overload every single time you fire the cue. You're heating up nichrome wire or a chemical composition that fires it off in a complete circuit. So you can see there's lots of room for problems when you know you have a extreme overload or in a very short piece of wire something like that so this is a neat little addition that we've added to this system 
most of these systems, as a matter of fact, none that I know of have this extra protection. Um, so don't assume that your system has overload protection. You should, you know, if, if you buy any of our systems, uh, they will have them in the waterproof uh, models. So thank you for watching.